Hi everybody, it's Keith with Bob CNC here today with my best friend Robert. And I'm here with my best friend Keith. We wanted to welcome you again to Shop Talk. And uh, today we want to talk about bits. 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 Well, I need to talk about bits. Bits. Because, I, you know, I, I, you look at things technically. You look at things correctly. You look at things accurately. I kind of just look at Man, things. I'm starting to like you. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, Can you when, say that all again? No, I don't want to. I felt really uncomfortable. Yeah. When, you know, I want to, for example, we're talking about uh, an end mill. Yeah. And you told me I can't call it an end mill. Well, you know, you could, you could confuse people. I mean, they're commonly called the end mills, but an end mill really is uh, for cutting metal. It's, you know, there's geometry on a bit that cuts metal, and then there's geometry on a bit that cuts wood. So I would rather distinguish between the two. If we okay, could. We, we're not trying to be snobbish. Oh, I am. Okay. <laughs> the am truth I, am is I out. doing good? No, what we're, yeah, yeah. But what we're trying to do My is... My fancy sweatshirt today. Oh, geez, okay, okay. All right. Sorry, we're going. Right. No, maybe as far as we're going to get. Um, we want to accurately understand what bits are, what they do, so you can buy the right bits. Because otherwise, you can end up with a whole drawer full of stuff... And you can tell everybody can about Can I it. give you the Keith answer? What? There's the little metal thing. Oh, have shut up, sharp. Bob. Okay. The first thing about bits we need to talk about is we don't, we're not going to, we're not going to talk about end mills or ball nose or, um, or V bits. That's okay. how I would quantify them. You, you said you wanted to start with geometry. Well, so yeah. what do you mean? Well, on geometry, I would say that you have different kind of bits. You have a squared in bit that's going to cut a slot. You mean an end mill? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you. And then you have a ball nose, it's typically called, but it basically has a radius on each of those square corners. So that it's, it's not square. It's square, yeah, it's kind of like a ball. Yeah. Ball nose. Okay. And then of and then you have a V bit which comes down to a, a point and they can like be a, a V. <laughs> like a V. Come and on. they can be at varying angles so yes. that uh, you can cut deeper or shallower with the width of the line. Uh, they're really meant for a process called V-carving uh, that maybe we could talk about in another video. Okay. So that would be the ge different geometries, yeah. right, of just the shape that it's going to cut out. Right. And then you have different flute types, and they are? Single? <laughs> no, that's the count. Oh. You know, they are... Sp oh, spiral. Yeah, yeah spiral, spiral up. up. Spiral down. Compression, which is basically a spiral up and a you spiral down. You know, we talked to folks, and, okay. and perhaps, well, it, I'll take the blame, that, you know, we recommended, because we were using them for a while with our MDF cutting for spoil boards. We were using compression Compression bits, bits yeah. And at one time, we thought they were working really great, like sliced bread. Yeah. But we found uh, a better bit than a compression bit for the MDF, the way we well, cut Well, actually, it. I don't know if it's better, but it's just as good. We use the straight flute. Right, just a regular router straight flute bit, and right. it cuts just as good. Uh, the The compression bit is great in the fact that it has a spiral up and a spiral down in the right spot. So let's let's discuss those first, and maybe right. it'll make more sense. So a spiral up is great for getting chips out of the cut because it's pulling everything up. Right. Its downside is that it leaves little fuzzies along the cut, it's especially the top on of wood. The, yeah, the top of your workpiece. Yeah. Right. So a spiral down actually, you know, is slicing into the wood as it goes down. It forces the chips into the groove, right. which is bad, but boy, does it make a clean edge. Right. So now you can imagine an engineer going, hmm, what if I could have both? If I'm cutting through the whole piece of plywood or piece of wood, if I did an up cut on the bottom and a down cut on the top, and I went through there, I would have a clean edge on both sides. Right. That's the theory. Theory. So now... You know, sometimes you can't take out the whole piece at one pass. That's okay as long as you can get the up cut deep enough on the through, first actually, pass through the material. so that your down cut is actually cutting the top. Right. Which is difficult for the E3 but and it, the E4 because their passes need to be so light because of the uh, duty. And that's the problem. Yeah. Okay. So for a E3 or an E4, a compression bit isn't going to do you much good. For the KL7 series, Absolutely, it works really good. However, as Keith was saying, 
what we've discovered is the straight flute really right. does just a uh, a pretty good is job. Is it less expensive and it's too? A lot, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah a lot that's less. the par problem, right? Is because I'm so cheap. Well, it's it, not. It, it's it's not a matter of cheap, even yeah. though that's true. Yeah. I like bark on a tree tight. That's a lot. Okay. <laughs> that's no, it's mean. A, well, okay, and I enjoyed it, but that's okay. not. But that's not the point. Right. The the deal is, you know, it's 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 being cost effective. Right. There is no point in having the most expensive tools in your shop when you don't need That's right. the most expensive Absolutely. tools. Absolutely. We like so. simple, cost-effective yes. design. And yes. I like expensive tools. Yes, you do. Right. Anyway, so there's one more thing, right? right? Which you were talking about before is how many flutes. Yeah. So, you know, if your router is spinning really, really fast, you don't need a lot of flutes because every time that bit goes around, it's trying to cut something off, right? Well, if you have four flutes, which we would never recommend on a, on a CNC well, router. Let's stop a second. Okay. And that, that is because you, more is better. I mean, that's how we think. I mean, that's how I think. Yeah. That, that you'd get a, a smoother and you'd be able to cut faster with more flutes. You could cut faster. But so let's say back in the old school, like Bob CNC, you know, I got a Bridgeport CNC right. right at home that I play with every once in a while. Well, the, the max RPM on that thing is, well, I think it's like 4,000, but you couldn't run it at that. It's maybe m more like 3,500 before you're in the red, right? So now your, your bit's fairly slow, right, compared to a router. So now you can take advantage of, of those flutes because you're going to try to cut out a certain uh, a size chip, size chip okay. right? So if you have more flutes, then my feed rate can be faster. Now you have to have the horsepower, which my Bridgeport does, to carry that, right? Because you're removing or you're hogging out a lot of material. Right. Okay, so now let's go back to the router. Our routers, the E3 and the E4, can run at uh, 30,000 RPM. Yeah. So actually a single flute might actually uh, work better, or there's actually one that's called an O flute, where they say it's a zero flute, right? Which I don't actually know how that works. That would be works. a finish nail. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not quite, but we okay, could well, try cutting with one of those and see what happens. All right, you I know what I'm doing today. Yeah, <laughs> okay, but uh, but yeah, so the flute count matters in the fact that I can cut faster okay. if I have the horsepower and the rigidity of the machine. For the E3 and the E4, a single flute or two flute, the most. Uh, as a matter of fact, I would say on any CNC router, uh, you would want to do a single or a two flute because of the spindle speeds. Okay. And the uh, four flute bits are really for cutting metal on older machines that can't carry the RPM. Okay, and so, so the big thing is the loads required to have a fast enough feed rate yeah, to maximize the use of those multiple flutes right. puts too much stress on an E3, E4. Yes. Uh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, there's if, if you want to get into this, you can look up speeds and feeds. And there's right. calculators out there and you know there's you know there's surface speed but the bottom line is is you're you want to cut off a certain size chip and you have to have the rpm right you know to, or the feed rate they got to go together and you have to have the horsepower that can actually turn that keep that bit going and you also have to have the rigidity in the machine so there's a lot going on there for speeds and feeds that uh, we try to keep it simple and you know we'll say for like um, on the E3 and the E4, and this is conservative, but we'd say cut it 40 inches per minute uh, at about 30 thousandths or 0 .03 inches per pass, and, and you should be fine. You should be okay with a one or a two flute bit because wood is pretty forgiving. Right. However, on the KL series, we would say you know 150, 200 inches per minute, and and then uh, uh, you could cut it 0.1 inches or 0.125 inches per pass right and you'd still be okay so when you're starting what you want to have is just a square nose bit commonly called an end mill though technically it right. is an end mill okay you feel better about that I, you, you do good okay and then then you ought to probably start with a 60 degree v bit that's going you're going to be able to use that the most when you do v carving okay. or you want to do some engraving on a line right that would okay. work uh, you can increase the difference. You can get a 90 degree, you can get a, a 30 degree, you know, for different right. experiments. But to start, the square bit, the, uh, maybe a 60 degree V bit, and then a ball nose. Right. And then there's one bit that we haven't talked about. Yeah. And if you're going to do 3D relief carving and a lot of fine details, 
it's really a tapered bit okay. it comes down but it's not really a v-bit it has flutes but the the what they're trying to do is give you a really small cutting edge right and a really rigid bit so it's basically tapered but it's really kind of a ball nose tapered bit it's kind of a a specialty bit really just to do 3d relief carving and when you get to the point where you're doing 3d relief carving you'll understand what that bit's doing for you so okay then one last thing okay and that is the on the e3 e4 well with the kale series too okay uh you can get uh, one eighth inch diameter you can get quarter inch diameter right what should you get uh actually um it really depends on what you're doing but uh we normally cut eighth inch bits around here but if you're wanting to hog out something uh, you know, to do a 3D, you can use a quarter inch bit. I will say this, our KL7 series does not come with an eighth inch collet. You can buy one if you want to use eighth inch, but the DeWalt 611 only comes with a quarter inch collet. So okay. we just bought the uh, the eighth inch collets and we still run eighth inch bits here. Okay. So it really depends on what you're doing. So guys, if you have any questions about uh, the bits you're using or any question about how to operate your CNC, you can get a hold of us at the help desk at bobcnc.com. And so, till next time, thanks, guys. guys. We'll see you later.